Hey miners, Mining King here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the meter box that I got from Chump Change. So thanks again Chump Change for sending this over to me. Really appreciate it. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to install and use one of these meter boxes. So let's get right into it. All right guys. Before we get in this video, I just want to say thank you to Crypto Tito and Max Voltage. I got your guys' mail today, and um, so let's open it up real quick. Crypto Billionaire in the making. And then here is her sticker. So thank you, Crypto Tito, for sending me over your sticker. And then, so I got a couple of things here. This is from Max Voltage. I have a holographic Max Voltage sticker. I have a traditional Max Voltage sticker. I have his see through sticker, two coasters, and a magnet. And and then so let's go ahead and let's put those stickers where they chose. Here at the GPU wall and we have Crypto Tito's sticker here and she wanted to be put right here on the RTX 36. And then next we have the holographic max voltage very nice and he actually did not want this to be on a gpu he actually because he also has one of these mining motherboards is he wanted to be on the b150 zotac so max also had a magnet so i put it right here on my optiminer x8 ultra all right guys we're back so let's get back into the video all right so today i did say that we're going to be checking out this 240 um this meter box for 240 this is from chump change once again thank you bud for uh sending this over really appreciate it um so you don't really need to be an electrician but you really want to make sure that you follow the proper instructions for this there's I'm making a video right now. I know Chump Change and uh, Hobbyists and I think maybe even Panda made a video. They've all made stuff on how to hook these up. I'm just doing a video just because I'm doing it today and I figured I'd just take you guys along for the ride. Um, because the black 240 meter box I got had a couple cracks and breaks in this. This is a 3D printed box and I believe that this one from the meter box company is actually I think this is molded plastic that's why it's much stronger so the first thing we're gonna do is obviously you're gonna open up your box the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to need to you know cut the sheathing on the cable now my buddy already did this for me who made me the other 240 box so this is already kind of pre-done for me but you'll want to remove this black sheathing right here and then you'll get down to your your two your two hots and your ground so you'll want to cut these back probably about i'm going to say about half inch to three quarters inch just from my guess right here um but you want them to look like this right and this is this step was already kind of done for me so it makes it a little bit easier um i'm, I'm going to take the camera i'm going to get more of an overhead view so you guys can watch like down on the table as I kind of work on things. All right, before we get started, let's just maybe go over some of the tools that you guys may need for this particular job or tools that I would use is you're definitely gonna want like, you know, a nice utility blade to help cut your sheathing right here. Some cutters, you can use wire strippers too for this if you want, whatever's easiest for you. You'll also need some screwdrivers which I have my iFixit toolkit right here handy. And then you're gonna need your, depending upon your plug style, 
that you're going with. I'm going with an L630 uh, R, which this is an L630 R receptacle because it's going to be for an L630 locking plug, which means you put the plug in, if I can get it right here, right, and then you twist it and it locks so that way it can't come out. So it's a, it's a locking plug. So, and then you also need one of the Drock um, voltmeters here, okay? So and this is how it'll come. If you get it, it'll have the screen with a donut. And then you'll also need some kind of PCIe cable. This is a spare one I had. This is from Parallel Miner. Um, and I'll show you here in a minute why we're gonna need this. So the first thing we obviously need to do is is once you guys get these get the sheathing here cut back and then you have your three wires stripped you're going to want to just insert them through the hole now one thing that the meter box company could do to make things a little bit easier is going to be is they could add a, a romex um you know this is the other part of it that i have right here so that way you could secure the wire here because otherwise this cable can move up and down a little bit. Not very, not very much once you get it all set, but it would stop this thing from moving back and forth. So that's something that they maybe might consider down the road. So we have these right here and that's all set up. Let's untwist the cable a little bit here so it's more straight. All right. So we got our cable out and we got some we got room to work right now so let's you're gonna take your pcie cable and you don't need a bunch of slack now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to strip these wires and you're gonna want a good amount because what you're essentially gonna do is with these wires one side of the wire is going to go into the drock meter, right? Because this is how you're going to power your meter. And then the other the other side, you're going to wrap around here so that way you could get power to the meter. So one side, you kind of want to give a good amount of slack. Now this particular screw right here is a flathead screw right here, and it's pretty small. So you're going to need a pretty fine bit, which is why I like my iFixit toolkit because it has pretty much anything that you could want. Now I've already backed this off because like I said, I did have to disconnect it from the other meter. So mine are already backed off. I'm assuming they probably come backed off from the factory. So see, look, I need to chop some off. You see how this is sticking out right here. We kind of don't want that. Let's go ahead and let's cut this up. See, there's pretty much nothing exposed. There's like a very minute amount, which is not really anything. So we'll go ahead and tighten this one up. We'll test in here and we'll see how much we got. And it's actually perfect already. So you can see here that they're both like this. This one has a tiny bit of exposed, but it they can't ever touch each other. So they'll be fine. So the next thing we need to do is, is we need to get our L630 plug. We're gonna take our green. And if you see under here, you can see that there's like, it's kind of like U-shaped. It's really probably hard to see with the camera, but this is a U-shaped plate where this screw is right here. So you really want to just slip it underneath of it and it'll hold it down really good. You can kind of see where it was hooked up before on the other meter and it was flattened. So I find that if you hold it upside down, it makes it like this, it makes the plate stay down and makes it much easier to get the to get the, the wire in there. Make sure it's real tight because you don't want this thing coming out. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our, plate, our face plate here. And we're gonna wanna feed our donut through and our wires through. And I will say before we, you know, before we get into all that, I will say that this is nice on the meter box. They have this cutout right here, which is for this particular drock meter for these clips to snap into place here, which is really nice. So a lot of the 3D printed ones do not do that. So that's really, really nice. Nice and uh, flush right here, which is exactly what we want. 
so the next thing we're gonna do is is on this white on this white hot leg here this is where you're gonna want to put your donut just like so you just this is this is how it gets the readings is right here so the next step is is we need to get our plug now we could kind of just leave this for here for a moment but now what we need to do is is we need to hook up our two hot legs but also while you do that you need this is why I made these extra long is so that you could take these and wrap them around these so I might even cut these a tiny bit as it's not that long but this wire is really thin and small so it, you could use a few wraps around it just to make sure you get a a good connection because you want to be able to power the meter correctly so another thing as well is make sure that this little dot is also face the to the right so that way the meter is facing the correct way on the meter box you'll see this little little dot right here so just make sure you do that correctly as well if you look at the diagram here on the drop meter and it's sitting like this you're going to want to take it tells you to take this one here and connect it on the same loop as the one that's taking the readings, which is obviously going to be our white one here. So I'm just going to take our wire, just wrap it around a little bit. Okay, next, the next wire you're going to want to, you're going to want to use this. So here's your green, this is your green wire, it's on your ground. So now you're going to want to put the white one here with our one we just did with the meter one. You're going to want to put it right here on this hookup right here. Make sure that thing is really tight because you don't want this coming out, right? So then we're going to take our last wire, okay, and we're going to tie it around the black on this side of the plug right here for the black wire right here. This is the only side, see, that has the last screw. So once again, I like to, you try to hold it upside down a little bit. Now we can uh, finish getting, you know, everything all buttoned up and getting it tightened up here. So, so you're gonna wanna use, the, so this box comes with a few screws. So you're gonna wanna take these two screws with these two nuts right here. And this is what you're gonna wanna use. So now you have your plug and your meter all set up. Now we're just gonna set it down right in the box. Now, you may have to work this a little bit here. I would not use an impact or anything like that on this plastic. You will most likely crack it if you're not careful. One thing like I said, they need the Romex connector so this isn't moving in and out. I don't like that, but other than that, here is your meter box. So now this is all set up and yeah, let's take it out to the garage. Let me turn my rigs off and let's plug this thing in and see if she works. All right guys, we're out here in the farm. And <laughs> so you're like, whoa, is this being held up by this? And the answer is a little bit. I have some command labor um, sticky things back here, but it was bringing the tent out, so I put this here just to hold it up. This is just temporary, because um, I'll let you guys know in a second about why it's temporary. But as you can see, this started out at 249, and we're right at 240 right now. We're pulling about 5,000 watts. And this is how many kilowatt hours we've already used. So we're already at 8.7 kilowatt hours since I just plugged this in a few minutes ago. So. I, was, I said that this was temporary. Well, this is the game plan. Um, I'm gonna get all octa miners. So I need one, two, Three, four, five. So I need one, two, three, four, yep, five more. I need five more X8 Ultra Pluses um, to get my whole farm into Octaminers. 
And what I'll do is, is I'm going to get a like heavy duty steel rack and I'm gonna stand all the octaminers up. I'll make a cabinet all the way around it. And then um, it'll be much easier to have a hot cold aisle because this plastic thing here isn't really working super, super great. So um, yeah, everything is gonna go down into octaminers. So, hey guys, anyways, this is the Mining King giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.